Yeah. But what the, the US court, I think it's just a district court, it's not actually the Supreme Court yet, but is hoping. Um, they've actually ruled that you can't actually have a patent on it, which I think is a spectacular, spectacular step. It's, it's good. At it's the good. moment, because that means, I, I, I don't know, it, it means that you can actually, like, you can keep on, like, researching further and further and further, and we're going to understand the human genome, like, very quickly, like, give us a few years, it's going to be nothing. Uh, to actually be in control of my genome and all of this stuff around, to actually leave that as a level playing field, I, I feel good about that. <laughs> There's no real other word for it. I just feel good. <laughs> I do. I like, I mean, oh, sure. Like, you can talk about the economic benefit. You can talk about all of that. But, um... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. It, it's really good. It, it means that I can't be patented. Like, yay. Yeah, it's good that genes can't be patented. Yeah. It's good. And well, when you're talking further and further, I mean, this isn't... Like, sure, this is a little bit of the far future. Maybe not too much of the far future. Like, we're, we're talking a few years that this is becoming important right now. That you can actually go to eBay and you can actually find a lot of these stuff that does it, well, from about 10 years ago. You can get a lot of the machines that do the same thing, but it's a lot slower, obviously. What are you talking about? Well, the patenting human genomes. Human genomes. The, the machines have nothing. You're talking about, um... Actually reading it. Genetic synthesization. Yes! Exactly. God. I'm going to do the next story. No, 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 no. This is important. This is very is. important. And that's what I mean. That they, they, They've actually said that you can't put a patent on it. Like, damn. Yeah, it's, it, it's good. It's damn straight. It's good. <laughs> but, uh, because yeah. you can actually use that information, you know, if you have it out in the open and let like, any scientists, anyone play with it. What well, means people can actually it. share it online. There are actually sites online right now that where you can share it to anyone yeah. that you want. And, like I was saying before, on eBay and all of that, you can actually buy the machines really cheaply to actually synthesize it. Synthesize it. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But, but um, can only do, um, a small it's very amount of slowly. Base bears, so Obvi it's, yeah, well, like I said, it's information technology. It'll keep on expanding and exponentially. Just, they, just printers and stuff. Yeah. But um, the, the very fact that they've done that, I think, is spectacular. And, um, yeah, we might actually not be... Uh, held liable for a lot of things, which is good. Yep. I don't like being held liable. <laughs> it doesn't work well. Okay, I'm gonna do the next story. Um, there's a... You're rambling far too much. Uh, there's a company called Statsheet that's, uh... What they do is collect uh, a whole bunch of uh, sports stats, which is pretty cool. But it's just what they're actually doing with it. Uh, what they're doing now is they're, there's a found, the founder, uh, Robbie Allen, is actually planning on using all these stats that his company collects and uh, he does this for a bunch of sports, I think just in the States at the moment. Is it volleyball? Uh, no. What's the sports? <laughs> Cricket. But uh, what's he, what he's going to do is essentially Hockey. use this to create an AI software program which can use those stats and create original sort of, um, I guess, what, what would you call them, like sports articles, sports reporting. Um, and he wants to get to the point where, and he thinks he'll, he can get to the point where 90% uh, of his readers won't be able to tell that it was actually written by a, a robot, by an AI. By I, that actually could work really well. Because, like, yeah. when I read curling articles, I'm really disappointed that it doesn't <laughs> actually work too well. Like, I want to read curling articles, like, straight to the point and see the statistics. Yeah, you want to see the statistics. Damn the straight. Stuff. I know, like, curling's a difficult <laughs> sport. It gets a bad rap, but curling's difficult. Mm. And, I mean, it's been a winter Olympics, so I can actually... <laughs> that is such a weird sport, hey? Just put a thing along the I ice. I actually and... think it could be kind of fun. <laughs> we don't have ice here. We have frost. If you did, you'd just like slide along it anyway. I used to, and I hit my human head. curling. I was like three. My mum said that that caused my future personality. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, also, linking. <laughs> also, anyway, sorry, sports. Also, linking into that is uh, there's another company. No, not a company. A university, a university in Belgium. They didn't spell university right. Universite. <laughs> no, it's, it's written in Belgium. Oh, well, then it's okay. <laughs> uh, what they've done Belgium. is... You think you're so good with your non-English speaking Belgianese. That's not a word. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what they've done is they've, uh, they've worked out a system where uh, they, li they link up a whole bunch of uh, video cameras. Uh, they're, they're just done with the basketball stadium at the moment. 
but the basketball the system can actually lock on to particular players of interest. So say the the captain or something or the high scorer or whatever that. Um, it can actually you set up all these cameras and it automatically creates an entire broadcast based on uh, the entire game. It just does it by itself. It does the cuts. It it focuses in on the frames where the shots are happening. It's essentially um, does it like analyze all of the other other videos from before and actually see how it's been done? Like I mean that that seems like what it would be doing. Like to actually work out the cuts well, and all that, it could actually become it could be. the way of doing it. Well, it's not really. Sports coverage is just... Oh, you, I know, it's just basic stuff. You focus hey. on the ball. Yeah, that's it. So you can actually... Well, what they're it's, doing with this... That's all that it needs to do, really. Well, it's, you could get rid of the people actually manning it, and you could actually yeah. just focus on what is interesting at the point. Because you've got all of these cameras around the court at so many different times that you could actually say, oh, focus on this, focus on this. Well, yeah. it's not even focusing on this, it's just present this as the main view. Yeah. That's kind of epic. It'd be pretty cool. That's and, and, really and epic. It links into the previous story as well. So you, when you... In, in the next couple of years, we'll probably have sports that are just completely automated. Yeah. The coverage is automated with uh, with video and audio and even interviews. Like, you're getting yeah. uh, these robots coming out now that are doing can do oh, interviews my. by themselves well, and stuff. And the interviews, I, I think, is a bit... And the articles as well, yeah. But, well, the thing that, like, we've spoken about before is, like, the um, Special Olympics. The Special be, Olympics is going to be fantastic. What, what, what time do you think that would actually hit the threshold, like... I think next year. I think the next Special Olympics, actually. Next year? Yeah, but well, did you hear about the last Special Olympics? The person only uh, missed qualifying. Uh, I forget. Was He was qualifying. He was in the Special Olympics. And he was trying to qualify for the real Olympics in the 100 meter sprint. Or it was a certain sprint. It was, it was running. And um, he missed out by just a... It was running. It was running. <laughs> <laughs> he, he missed out by just a, a certain amount. And he didn't have, like, a leg. He just had one of those bendy things. Bendy cool. legs. The bendy legs. I don't know. But they were like all, all the technology and all of that into it. But um, what actually makes it really interesting is that if you actually consider that people like without any legs, they've all got the, um, you know, the, the running and the, the Special Olympics and all of that. Well, they do. What are <laughs> yeah, you laughing about? Your... <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to actually start seeing uh, world records be broken at the Special Olympics. So they're going to be mm. faster than people who can run normally. Uh, I that's just happen next year, I think. I don't think that, you know, it won't be broken next year. Another, like, two, well, wait, when, when's the next, it was this year, four years, it? isn't it? Oh, it might it's be this year. No, no, it's, it's this year. Well, it's about to happen this year. Because it's 2010. It's going to happen this year. So no, maybe. 2014. No. With the Olympics in 2000? Yeah, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012. So therefore, the, the Special Olympics are 2010. So this year. Oh, okay, especially, okay, yeah, so. Yeah. So the uh, Special Olympics will probably happen this year, but I, yeah, well, like, 2012 will probably be when maybe someone disabled will get in, or we'll see what happens, but I think that's going to be very interesting that after a while that the Olympics, eh, this may just be me, but I don't find it that interesting at the moment. I think it's <laughs> kind of boring. Um, like, well, well done, you jumped higher than other people. Like, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Special Olympics and all of that, then that's actually like it's an engineering history. feat. Like, wow, you, you can actually run faster than anyone's ever run before because you've got awesome bendy legs. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> What's well, bendy legs? Oh, it's on <laughs> TED. Did you see the TED talk about it? This TED talk, oh, yeah. uh, it was this fantastic girl. She was a fantastic woman. She was speaking about it and it was just amazing what she was talking about. She said how <laughs> liberated she felt. She could make herself as tall as she wanted and do all of these things because it's really not an issue these days. It's just who I am. And yeah. that's why I find that as we as we grow up and as the world grows up that the Special Olympics are going to be so much more interesting than the real Olympics because that's where the real shit goes yeah. down. 